Hi, my name is Sasha. Welcome back to my channel, Sash Reads, and this is my January TBR. So, if you're new here, I do a TBR game. It's not as intricate and as amazing as some others where they've literally created their own board game. I just use Pokemon Go because I play it often. I thought I could in like interconnect my two hobbies, which is Pokemon Go and reading. I will put in the description the whole breakdown of like what Pokemon type contributes to what type of book I read. But today, let's see how I did. So we started off with a Kanto Slowpoke. You're like, why are you saying Kanto? That's because there's a new type of Slowpoke out. I don't know if it's an Alolan. Oh no, it's a newer one. And it's got different types. Um, but the Kanto one, I believe, is water only. Um, and so for a water type pick, I have to choose a book with pirates. So I am going to be choosing Using Feo by... Victoria Avaline. I'm not quite sure if it's Feo or Feijo. Now, this is a buddy read that I'm doing with a couple people on Meredith's Discord. We ha have dedicated live reading sprints where we all read it at the same time, and it's been so much fun. This is book five, I believe, because we started it in August, and I believe we skipped a month. So, very exciting. Alien romance series. Pretty much these human girls get trafficked into... Uh, this alien world, uh, which is the Clacania, Cl I think. And this one is about Fejo, who we met in the first book. And I was like, I cannot wait to see his story because I love him so much. He is a space pirate. Vanessa doesn't have the luxury of building a happily ever after on a new planet like her fellow alien abduction survivors. She must get back to Earth. Her family needs her and she can't afford to let them down again. So she'll find a way to break Lacanian law and get home, even if she has to marry and betray a sexy space pirate to do it. So I'm very excited for their story because Vanessa is such a fiery uh, character and I'm excited to see how her and Fejo connect. I then caught a Froki, which is one of the starter Pokemon for, is it Sword and Shield? There's so many now. I can tell you probably up until maybe Diamond and Pearl, possibly X and Y. No, I think Froakie might be X and Y because I think it was Froakie, Fennekin, and Chespin. And so that was all X and Y, I think, because I remember Fennekin with Serena, who was the X and Y main character. Don't take that, like, as truth because I could be completely wrong. So it's another water type, so it's another pirate book. And I'm very excited to be reading Hunt on Dark Waters by Katie Robert. This is her first in the... I thought she had a series name for it, but it's not saying here. Crimson Sails. So this is Crimson Sails book one. This is focusing on Bowen. So he's like a pirate captain. And he picks up Evelyn who is a witch. They get transported to another realm. Bowen, I believe, it's kind of like the realm police, possibly. So if like people are like hopping realms uh, to try and get away, um, like, sort of like criminal sort of thing, he'll go after them. And so I believe Evelyn is a witch and she stole from her sexy ex-vampire, whatever that means. She's fished out of the waters by a band of seafarers and their telekinetic captain. She's immediately given a choice, join their group or die. So I love Katie Roberts work and I just know this is gonna be sexy, but also action pack. And I'm very excited to read another pirate book this month. The next Pokemon I caught was a Togetic, uh, which is a fairy Pokemon. Uh, this is actually the evolution of Togepi. So if you played the games, Togepi was the first Pokemon we saw that was hatched from an egg in the second generation. And then um, also Togepi uh, gets taken care of by Misty in the anime. So Togetic is its evolution. And for this fairy prompt, I'll be reading a book with Faye. 
and I'll be reading Zodiac Academy The Awakening. So I will be rereading this. I did read this in 2022, I think. But Emily and I wanted to reread this and we're going to do it together. And then a couple other people on Meredith's Discord wanted to jump along as well. So I'll link Meredith's Discord below. So if you wanted to join our uh, read along, we're doing one a month or one and a bit a month, which you'll see. Uh, so yeah, we're going to start with The Awakening in January, and I'm so, so very excited to come back in to the Solarian world and just see the airs again. I'm very excited. I have missed Darius and Lance. I love them both so very much, and yes, I'm very excited to jump back in. So pretty much, uh, Zodiac Academy is about these twin girls, uh, Darcy and Tori, who get swept away from the human world and into the fey world to find out that they're actually the daughters of the late king. They get taken to the school called Zodiac Academy where they have to uh, like learn their powers. Pretty much try and take back the throne from the four heirs who are wanting to rule Solaria. And so the four heirs are actually like the eldest sons of the council of the late king. And because there hasn't been a king in so long, they think that they uh, they own the throne, basically. So Darcy and Tori have come back to take their rightful place in the Solarian world. And it's so much fun. It's so cringy, but it's so good. I love it so much. If you like Fourth Wing, you'd probably like this. This is a bully romance at the start. Like, this first book is pretty bully. Uh, but when you continue on, it's just so good. And I'm very, very excited. I then caught a Fennekin, which is a fire type Pokemon. This is the starter in the same uh, generation as Froakie. Like I said earlier, look at this cute little Firefox. I love it so much. Anyway, so my fire type prompt was a book with a spice. And a lot of books I plan on reading this month is going to be spicy, but two books in particular, one is going to be A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Maas. I was hoping to read this in December, but I don't think that's going to happen because I'm in the middle of Wings and Ruin at the moment and it's December 25th right now. I could start it in December, but I'm probably going to finish it in January uh, because I am rereading all of Akatar and all of Crescent City for House of Flame and Shadow, which comes out on January 30th. And so Silver Flames is about Nesta and Cassian's story, and it continues like the whole overarching plot. Oh no, actually it kind of starts a new plot. Like you got a new big bad, and there's lots of unanswered questions still, but I'm very excited to read the read this one because I haven't reread Silver Flames yet, so I'm excited to get back into it. Like I said, I am reading Aqua War right now and I'm just loving seeing Cassian's and Nesta's interactions from Vera's point of view. So yeah, I love these two very much. I then caught a Chespin, which is a grass type Pokemon. And this is the grass starter of the X and Y generation. And my grass type prompt is read a middle grade, which works out well for January, which you're playing along with Bookamon. If you're reading Bookamon prompts, just stay tuned. So a middle grade that I will be reading this month is Marvelous by Danielle Clayton. This is her first middle grade and it's about a magic school. So I'm loving my magic school vibes that are happening this month. And this is about 11-year-old Ella Durand, who is the first ever conjurer to attend the Arcanum. And despite her excitement, Ella discovers that being first isn't easy. Some marvelers mistrust her magic, which they deem unnatural. Ella is determined to fit in, though, and eventually finds friends and fellow misfits Bridget, a girl who hates magic, and Jason, a boy with a fondness for magical creatures. So, very excited. I love that cover, and I read The Bells by Danielle Clayton, really enjoyed it, so I'm excited to read her middle grade. I then caught another chess pin, uh, which means that I do need to read another middle grade. Now, I'm not quite sure what I want to read yet, uh, but I'm hoping the library will have this particular book, and it's called Ruby the Red Fairy by Daisy Meadows. This is the first book in like the Rainbow Magic slash Rainbow Fairies world. Uh, I read these books in 
like primary school and I love them so much. And so this is about two girls, Rachel and Kirsty, who meet on a ferry to Rainspell Island and they have no idea the incredible magical adventures they're about to create together. Join the two best friends as they meet Ruby the Red Fairy, the first fairy to introduce them to the world of rainbow magic. So yeah, hoping my library will have this so I can read it. Maybe I might find it on uh, Libby if there was an audio. But yeah, so this is my next chessman prompt. I then caught a whooper. Now this is not your normal whooper. If you ever watched the Pokemon early on or if you played Generation 2 at all. This is from one of the newer generations and it is actually a poison type. So poison type prompt is to read a retelling, which is very exciting because in the Pokemon readathon that is happening here throughout next year, there is a prompt to read six retellings or reimaginings in six months. So this works out very well for me. So I will be reading The Ugly Stepsister by Megan Van Dyke. So this is a Cinderella reimagining and it's about Anna, who is the stepsister of Cinderella, who has run away from her home because Cinderella is now queen and she's now captured her like stepmother and her other stepsister. And so Anna, disguised as a boy called Ansel, trying to bring Cinderella down with the help of a former royal huntsman named Will. Because Will doesn't quite believe that Cinderella is the nice face that she puts out because she came to Queendom pretty suddenly after the death of both the old king and the prince. Very excited to see this and I'm, I love Megan Van Dyke's works. I'm very excited to read this next book in the Reimagined Fairy Tale series. I then caught another Fennekin, which, as I said earlier, is a fire type Pokemon. And it's such a cute Firefox. Uh, it does turn into Fire Psychic once you evolve it, which I think is a really cool combo. And so the Fire Prompt is read a book with spice in it. So I will be reading House of Sky and Breath by Sarah J. Maas because. Like I said, House of Flame and Shadow comes out January 30th, and you're like, where is House of the Open Blood? Here. I just couldn't find a prompt for House of the Open Blood. Like, I could have picked Fairy, um, like Book with Faye in it, but I really wanted to try and get Zodiac Academy on here. And so if I put the second book in a series, I'm definitely going to read the first book. But I love these Barnes & Noble's exclusive covers. I love that Bookish and Spice, which is a company here in Australia, were able to get these Barnes & Noble's exclusive covers for us Aussies. And yes, I very, very love these and I'm very excited to read them. I don't know if I'm going to read these covers or the newest paperbacks that have come out. Either which way, they're going to be get read. No, actually, I'm probably going to listen to the audiobooks, but I still like having the covers there. And then the final Pokemon I caught was a Timber, which is a fighting type Pokemon. And this thing in in the game, in Pokemon Go anyway, once you evolve it all the way, it is a pretty intense fighting type. It's really great for raids and such. Yeah, I just think he's like he's solid. <laughs> anyway, the fighting type prompt is actually a book with sports in it. And I'm trying to rack my brain. I don't think any of the books I really have have sports in it. Like I could probably use House of Earth and Breath. Earth and Blood, I mean, for the book with sports in it, because they talk about, is it Sunball? But they don't play it. Uh, but in Origins of Academy Bully by the Twisted Sisters, this is focusing on Darius and Lance about four years before The Awakening. We will be reading this book in the read-along that's happening in the Discord. And yeah, so like I said, it focuses on Darius and Lance four years before Zodiac Academy The Awakening. And it shows you why they are so close. And I believe that this book has a scene of Lance playing the game that they play, which is just... It's really, it's, it, there is a sort of sports game in it that I can't quite remember right now what it's called. But it's, is it Pitbull? It is Pitbull. Oh, I'm so good. 
Okay, so that is it for my Pokemon Go TBR. I do have a couple other books on this TBR, so bear with me, please. I do have a couple buddy reads this month. Like I said, we're doing the Zodiac Academy 0 0.5 and 1. We are also reading The Scepter by Jay Bree, which is the prequel to Crown of Oath and Curses by Jay Bree. This was started by Sam Mantha Donovan, um, and it's in the Discord as well. It's only about 87 pages, and it shows you more about the main character, I believe, and how she gets to where she is in the first book. But yeah, the novella is on Kindle Unlimited, I believe. Very excited to get to this, and to get to the first book in March because we believe that the second book is supposed to come out in April. And then this year I am doing 12 recommendations by 12 friends to hold me accountable and to actually read these 12 books this year. I am going to do a spin the wheel for each book each month. And so as you see here, here's my spin the wheel. And Kindred by Octavia E. Butler one, which I didn't mean to, like, I didn't think such a hard hitting book was going to be on my January TBR, but here we are. Not that I'm not excited to read it. It's just, I know it's a uh, very, like it talks about some really hard hitting topics. If I remember correctly, Kindred is about this black woman called Dana who lives in the 21st century and she keeps getting transported back to the antebellum south now i'm not quite sure what timeline that is but i'm pretty sure it's when uh black people were still slaves in america she gets transported back yeah to the south and she saves rufus who is the white son of a plantation owner very interested to see why everyone loves this book so much and it is sort of a classic it's like one of those new classics so yeah i'm very excited that i'll be able to read this and check it off my classics list even though i'm not very a classic reader another buddy read or book club that i like to participate in is the full moon book club by Jan Agaton and in January we are reading The Invisible Hour by Alice Hoffman. Now I haven't read any Alice Hoffman before. I believe she's the author of Practical Magic. So this is about 16 year old Ivy who is pregnant and alone. Okay, Jan hates books about pregnancy so why'd she choose this? She's cast out by her family and she seeks refuge in a community which she believes will offer peace and safety. A world away from the life she led in Boston. Only too late does she discover that oppression and strict rules curtail any notion of freedom. And then you've got Ivy's daughter Mia, who has known only the claustrophobic life of the community. Breaking rules carries serious consequences, but stumbling upon a world beyond is enticing and intoxicating. Mia will begin to discover that readers and writers affect one another in mysterious ways. The time is more fluid than she can possibly imagine, but love is far stronger than any chains that binds us. I mean, that sounds really heartwarming at the end there. Uh, but yeah, this is really tiny, uh, but I'm very excited to read this, discuss it with the rest of the vamps and the Full Moon Book Club cronies. I don't know why I called you cronies. None of you are old. I'm so sorry. Okay, and then there's another reading challenge that's happening over on Surogarf, and it was created by the Margarita S on Instagram, I believe, and it is called The Diverse Baseline. It came about when they noticed the Goodreads Choice Awards were just white. There was like one or two specks of color in there. And so for us as a bookish community, we are trying to get more diverse in our reading by reading at least three books a month that are by diverse authors. So there's three prompts and the first three prompts in January, I believe one was poetry by a BIPOC author. Um, the next was read a book by a Latin author. And then the third was a fat main character by a BIPOC author. And so for the poetry prompt, I'm going to be reading Me Moth by Amber McBride. This is a debut YA novel in verse about a teen girl who is grieving the deaths of her family and a teen boy who crosses her path. I put a poll pick up on my Instagram because when I was doing this TBR up, I mixed up my poison and my psychic prompts. And so I thought poison was a poll pick, but that's actually psychic. But anyway, it still helped. Uh, so Me Moth won 
and yeah I believe I'm getting this on audio by Libby so hopefully I enjoy it I feel like poetry books are easier to induce as an audio because it's just better I don't know it sounds better like I have no rhyme or rhythm so reading a poetry book I have no idea how it's supposed to go so having someone read it to me is going to be superb it might be narrated by the author I'm not quite sure but either way I, I know I well I hope I'm going to like it and then for the Latin author I am going to be reading Mexican Gothic by Silvia Morano Garcia this is a beloved book by this beloved author and I believe it's a horror uh, set in a 1950s Mexico and um, apparently there is a freaky mushroom scene. All I know is that Meredith fell in love this, with this book when she did her horror books back in 2022 and I'm excited to read what she loves. And then the last book, which is featuring a fact main character, I'm going to be reading Yours for Now by Leonor Solis. This is a fake dating book, which is very exciting. And I actually received an arc of this book last year, and I feel so bad I haven't read it yet, but I'm very excited too. So this is about Gabe, and I'm not quite sure what the chick's name is. But it says, Yours for Now is a slow burn, cozy, dual POV romance with a strong Latina female main character and a billionaire Latino male main character. This fake relationship trope story includes plus size, queer representation, and open door spice, which is just all my favorite things. I love the cover of this book because her body shape is so different to the other plus size bodies we see on book covers. Because like, no, there's not just one body shape, not just one plus size body shape too. So yeah, I love how the author like made sure the illustrator dare it like show that and then last but not least on my tbr this is hopeful i don't know if i'm gonna get to it but i really want to and that is iron widow by Ziren j zhao i read the first chapter a couple days ago and i really enjoyed it and this actually will work for the one of the stake prompts next year for the bookerman readathon as well because it's read a book three different shades of red so this is about Zetian, Zetian, who um, offers herself up as a concubine pilot to the king or the emperor because her sister was one but she died so she wants to avenge her sister and kill the guy that killed her sister and it's poly rep it's Asian representation and this author is such a blast on Instagram they're hilarious so very excited to read this Anyway, so that is it for my January TBR. Thank you so much for watching. And yeah, this is the end of my 12 days of book miss. I know this is a little bit late. Please forgive me. If you did like this video, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more videos by me. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. I'll see you next time. Bye.